Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jeff here from Oak Ridge Student Ministries on behalf of Oak Ridge Presbyterian Church. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to join you, to be able to hang out. Uh, you're joining us for week two of our In My Opinion series. So if you missed week one, week one, go back to last week's video, check that one out. We talked about gossip and about why we gossip and why we maybe shouldn't or think differently about how we talk about others. Uh, this week we're going to go in a little bit of a different direction um, and talk about speaking up, about how we can communicate with other people to help them to know uh, that maybe they're heading in a bad direction or in a direction that they don't necessarily want to be going. So uh, join us and let's let's see where we where we go with this. If you have any questions, if you need to talk to someone, please feel free to get a hold of me. You can check us out at Oak Ridge Student Ministries on Facebook and Instagram. You can email me directly at jhopkins at oakridge.london.on.ca in the longest email address in the world. And uh, you can call the church directly at 519-471-2290. And my extension is 226. I am checking my... Uh, voicemail there daily. So I will get the message and get back to you as soon as I can. So uh, thank you. It's awesome to have you join us. Uh, let's just open with a word of prayer. God, I pray that you would be with us. You would join us here as we seek to understand your word and your plan for us in a different way. I pray that you would help us to hear and understand what you have planned for us today that you would uh, keep us attentive to what you have. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, have you guys ever spoken up about something, and it ended up being totally awkward and hurtful and embarrassing, and you didn't mean any harm, you weren't trying to hurt anyone, but the words came out of your mouth and they ended up more, doing more damage than good? I think we can all say that we've been there at some point in time. I definitely know that uh, I... I have said many a thing that I meant to be very beneficial and helpful to people I was talking to, and it ended up coming across really hard or negative. And if you've been there, if you've been on the other side of that, uh, it can be really hard. And you know what this feels like. We don't have any bad intentions. We don't try and hurt someone, but we're just sharing our opinion. You know, in my opinion, you're really going down a path that you know, you're, you're heading towards this destructive behavior, you're, but when our opinion causes awkwardness, embarrassment, or hurt, it makes us wonder when or if it's okay to speak up. But as bad as those awkward moments can be, I think they're actually not the moments where we fear speaking up the most. I think most often the place a lot of us run into, into this fear of sharing our opinion is actually with our friends. You know, we can, we can try and share with our family, we can try it, but when we are talking to our friends, and maybe you're thinking, no, I can, I tell everything, I tell my friends everything, I, I don't hide anything from them, but maybe that's kind of the surface level day to day. This is when it gets a little bit deeper into the hard stuff, into the stuff that makes speaking up or speaking out more complicated. And I want you to think about the last time you saw your friend make a bad choice. And we, we've all been there. We've all seen friends make that, that decision that is, again, heading down a, a bad path or um, on the verge of doing something that we know is really, really, really not going to be good for them. And when that happens, if you're anything like me, you probably want to say something. You feel like you have to speak up, but you aren't sure what to say or even if you should say anything at all. And I think most of us can say that we felt that tension before, that push and pull of, you know, I really think that, that something needs to be said, but I don't know how, and I don't know. And we come up with excuses. We come up with all of the excuses in the world to make sure that we don't feel awkward about it. We, and, and I want to give you those lists, and I want to go through them and kind of combat them a little bit about what we, what we think we should say or when we think we should say something and then what we tell ourselves to talk ourselves out of that because it'll be, it's not good. So the first thing is it's no big deal, 
we've seen our friend doing something that we think is going to be damaging. It's going to be hurtful. And we talk ourselves down because it's, it's not really that big of a deal. It's you know, people do that all the time. It's not really going to do that much damage. Or if we speak up, I'll make my friend mad. I'll ruin my friendship. I will do damage. And as a result, we don't say anything at all. Sometimes we don't say anything because we think, what can I say? I've done the same thing. And so they're not going to listen. They're just going to throw it back in my face. I, I'm not going to say something because they know I've been through the same thing. Uh, so it's, it's not really any of my business. Or maybe you just don't think they're going to listen at all anyway. So what, why bother? Uh, if you joined us last week or if you clicked away and watched last week, uh, we talked about not gossiping about one another. And maybe sometimes this stuff feels like gossip. It feels like, well, I, I'm not supposed to gossip. So uh, I, I heard that they were doing this thing through someone else. So I'm not going to say anything because, well, I'm not supposed to gossip. Or maybe you've told them before and you don't, you've decided not to talk to them again. You're not going to tell them again. These are all excuses that we, we tell ourselves. We try and talk ourselves out of those awkward and hard conversations. But I know that it feels good to know that I'm not the only one that feels that way. I'm not usually the person who shies away from those conversations, but we've all been in situations where we know that we should speak up, but we make excuses for why we don't. And I think it's normal to feel that way. Today, we're going to talk about why it's probably not the best choice we can make. And I, I want to just pause for a second and say that I know that this isn't the case for all of us. Some of you, like me, have no problem at all speaking up. And you're not shy, shy to tell your friends what you think. And I think this is a really important message for you too, for me. Because when it comes to speaking up like situations, in situations like these, we, we have our reasons, we have our excuses. And for you, speaking up is a, is a struggle. And you constantly question if it's worth the risk. Or maybe if it comes out easily to you, you probably don't always offer your opinion in the nicest way. Either way, there has to be a better way to speak up, to share our opinion when we think that they are helpful to someone we care about. So I, I want to tell you that these questions, these excuses, this, this struggling to find the best way to speak up isn't a new one. And we're going to take a look at the letter of Galatians. Um, and this is a, a letter that Paul wrote to a church in Galatia. And this letter approached and talked about this exact issue. And Paul wrote this letter because he really cared about the believers in the church. He had planted this church in Galatia and he was writing this letter back because he really, really cared. And he wanted to help his friends. So take a look at what he wrote. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 in the New Living Translation. And Paul says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. Now, even though Paul addressed this passage to people who lived a long time ago, I think we can all learn something from this. It doesn't matter whether you grew up in church and you've been a Christian your whole life, or if you're brand new here and this is the first time you've clicked on a video, you've uh, been to a church service, even though this isn't the normal church service, this can apply to all of us. And Paul addressed this passage to fellow Christians, to believers, because they were his friends and he cared about them. He cared about what happened to them and because of that, he didn't want them to make choices that would hurt themselves or others. And I think we can all relate to that feeling, right? When we care about someone else, then we want what's best for them. We don't want to see them hurt themselves or others. And sometimes that means we have to speak up when we see them heading in, a, in that direction. So what did Paul say we should do? According to this verse, when we see friends who are struggling with things that might hurt them, or they're moving down a path that's going to lead them to something harmful, it's important that we do what we can to help them get back on the right path. And a lot of the times that includes speaking up. We have to say something. 
Now, I get that this is super hard for a lot of us. And like we said earlier, there are so many reasons we have not to say something. And we, especially when we know that it's something our friends don't necessarily want to hear. We're afraid it'll hurt their feelings or upset them or damage our relationship with them. But I think in situations where our friends are walking towards something that could be really bad for them and for their future, we have to care more about the person than about the relationship. And I want to say that again because I want you to hear it. We have to care about the person more than we care about the relationship. When we speak up, we have to care about that person we're talking to more than we do about the relationship we have with them. Because it's possible that our friendship will get bruised in the process. Our, that person we're talking to has to be more important than the relationship we have with them. And I know that can be a hard thing to do. So to start, try this for me. I want you to put yourself in their shoes. I want you to picture yourself doing the same thing that that person is doing. And what would you want someone to do for you? For most of you, you probably know that you would rather have someone point out that you're doing something that's going to hurt you than to have them sit back and in a year from now say, well, I knew that was going to happen. I knew that's where you were headed. I knew that was... So what would you want? And if you have the opportunity to speak up and help them move back towards the right path, wouldn't that be the thing that you wanted them to do for you? Now... Like we said, there are some of you who are saying, I'm not afraid to speak up. I even kind of like telling people when they're wrong. Well, look back at the verse again. If you've got your Bible, if you've got your phone, Galatians verse or Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Paul didn't just tell us to help our friends get back on the right path. He told us how to do it. He told us to do it with gentleness and humility. See, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. We need to speak the truth, but we need to do it in the right way and with the right heart. Paul says to gently and humbly help the friends you see struggling down the wrong path. Don't be the person who sits there and say, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. And a year from now, the I told you so doesn't help. Gently and humbly help your friends. It means speaking with kindness and love and encouragement instead of with anger and frustration and judgment. It means caring more about the person you're speaking to than in the fact that you're right. We all want to be right, don't we? This means care more about that person than it does about being right or wrong. Kindness, love, and encouragement, not anger, frustration, and judgment. In other words, use kindness when you speak up. Paul asked us to speak up, but to do it in kindness and love. And when we approach these tough conversations with love and kindness, it will change both what we say and how we say it. We'll speak up because we care about the other person and we want what's best for them. And we'll do it in love, using words that encourage, rebuild, and help our friends get back on the right path. Remember, we need to use kindness and love when we speak up. So the next time you find yourself in a situation where you think you need to speak up, I want you to ask yourself two questions. One, what does it look like to love my friend and show kindness in this situation? How do you use your words? Do you say it mean-spiritedly, angrily, or do you say it in kindness and love? It is as much about how you say what you say as it is about what you say. You have to speak kindly and care for that person. And the second question I want you to ask is, what would I want? Put yourself in their shoes. If it was you, would you want someone to call you on your stuff? To help you to walk through a hard situation? How would you want them to speak to you? How you say what you say is so important. So this week, keep in mind that you need to use kindness and love when you speak to one another. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.